Hello, my name is Alex Strasser, and this is my APS March meeting virtual presentation on nonlinear optical properties of Janus 2D materials, a computational study using density functional theory. First, two dimensional materials are an exciting area of research that really started with the discovery of graphene in the bottom, shown in the bottom left hand corner in 2004, which is a single layer of uh, graphite. And so these materials are atomically thin nanomaterials that are just a few atoms thick normally, and they exhibit quantum confinement effects, which makes them have unique properties that are very different from their bulk counterparts, sometimes exhibiting completely new uh, phenomena in physics, uh, very worth exploring. And these materials can be stacked on top of each other to form these van der Waals uh, heterostructures, so-called, as you can see in the bottom right-hand corner. Now about this Janus material specifically, first it is a two-dimensional material in the hexagonal crystal system. And you can also see here it has a three-fold rotational axis, um, which is 120 degree rotation, and also three mirror planes, uh, vertical mirror planes. And another thing worth noting is that the bulk is centrosymmetric the three-dimensional version is centrosymmetric, meaning it has a point of inversion symmetry, but the single-layer version, monolayer, is not centrosymmetric. And the important result of this for this presentation is that this means we have even-ordered nonlinear effects that can be seen, which uh, would disappear in the bulk or the centrosymmetric version. And then finally, the Janus material we replace one layer of atoms and that breaks the mirror plane symmetry. In other words, um, MOS2 has this mirror plane here that you can see that is horizontal. You can see the C axis in the vertical direction. But if you replace the top layer with selenium, then you no longer have that mirror plane symmetry. And so that um, reduces the symmetry of the overall structure. A little bit about what has been accomplished so far with this material experimentally. First thing is that it can be synthesized in two ways. You can either selenize MOS2 or sulfurize MOSE2, which is just both of them will just be replacing the top layer of atoms with uh, the certain, uh, in this case, uh, calcogen atom. Um, for example, the figure shown in the bottom from June Lowe's group at Rice shows a selenization of MOS2. And this is um, going to be the basis for what we're going to do, where the, the selenium on top is replacing sulfur. And then the unique properties that it has has been um, recorded that it has piezoelectricity, uh, as well as photocatalysis properties and applications in advanced optoelectronics. And this is especially along with piezoelectricity, a result of the out-of-plane dipole moment that we'll talk further about. As far as the general workflow for this study, first thing is that the atomic positions of this Janus 2 material will be fed into VASP that calculates the ground state, and we'll be using the Vienna Ab initio simulation package, or VASP, um, for DFT. And this will calculate the ground state, which will generate the band structure and also the dipole, the transition dipole matrix elements, as well as the crystal symmetries present in the system. And this goes into our in-house code, our um, package for calculating the nonlinear optical properties of materials, which is the you know, most interesting part of why we're studying this material in the first place. So a little bit about density functional theory. If you're unfamiliar with it, you start with you know, very simple equation. It's only three different letters. Uh, Schrodinger equation, how hard could it be? Well, the problem is that solid state physics, the Hamiltonian, is pretty insane um, to try to solve analytically. So we need to make some adjustments for this computational method. One such adjustment is that we're going to say, we can say that the electron density actually holds all of the inf necessary information in the system rather than dealing with such an explicit wave function. And the next thing is that we're going to say that the 
energy is a function of this electron density, which is then a function of position. That's the only um, necessary thing. So that's where the functional part of density functional theory comes in. There's many assumptions um, beyond this, such as independent particle approximation, Born-Oppenheimer approximation, and others. And from this, we can minimize the energy and get the ground state for our system. So that's just brief rack down our brief background for our system. Now for a brief background on the optical processes that are relevant to our system. So you have the standard linear absorption reflection transmission processes. For example, you have this two energy, two level energy diagram here for absorption and emission. Now nonlinear optical processes are for example, you have two different types of two photon processes, frequency mixing, and then the three that are really of interest to us would be second harmonic generation shown here. You have two photons of frequency omega combining to make a frequency doubled fro photon of frequency two, two omega. And then we also have shift photocurrent and injection current that we'll talk more about shortly. Now, all of these, all of these things follow this polarization equation where polarization is proportional to the susceptibility times the electric field. And then, since we're interested in the nonlinear parts, we can take a Taylor expansion of that equation. And we're especially interested in the second order nonlinear effects. Now, we need to talk about how the symmetry affects these properties in the second order. Uh, susceptibility especially. So here we just have the second order uh, polarization expansion part written more explicitly where A, B, and C are all Cartesian indices. And you can see here explicitly the latter two indices B and C represent the direction of polarization of the incident light that is being um, shined on the material. And then the Cartesian index A represents the response, the polarization response. Now, as far as the symmetry for this material, it is the C3V point group, as I mentioned earlier, has the threefold rotational axis, three mirror planes, ver vertical mirror planes. And um, otherwise, if you didn't have that broken mirror symmetry, um, for example, MOS2, then you would have a D D6H um, point group. But because it's C3V from group theory, we can show that this second order susceptibility has 11 non-zero tensor elements out of a total possible 27 um, because it's a third order tensor. And, but only four of these are going to be independent and we can see that in our results. That finishes the background and on, now onto some of the results that we calculated. First thing of interest would be the electronic band structure of this material. As you can see from the band diagram here that it is a semiconductor and specifically it is a direct band gap semiconductor. The transition at the K point which is a high symmetry point in the Breuin zone and the band gap is about 1.47 eV so that's pretty close. You know it's right around an optimal solar cell type of band gap. Um, however, it's important to note that DFT underestimates band gap, so the actual band gap is closer, probably closer to 1.75 eV, and this can be done with a scissor operator or a hybrid functional or other things that correct for this. But um, this result does include spin orbit coupling. Anyway, important takeaway is that it's a direct band gap semiconductor. And then, um, now on to more discussion for the nonlinear optical properties. The, we're going to talk about second harmonic generation first. And um, the important point is that it has excellent applications. For example, common the bright green laser pointer that is commonly seen. Um, the bright green is a 532 nanometer light. And um, this comes from a 1064 nanometer laser being pumped into a nonlinear crystal that frequency doubles it via second harmonic generation to generate that bright green light that is um, prominent in laser pointers. And then with second harmonic generation spectroscopy, widely used in structural analysis of materials to look at in their anisotropy, 
And finally, to observe ferroelectric domain walls, that SDG is very important. So this property has great applications. And onto our actual result, we can see exactly as anticipated from the group, the group theoretical analysis, we have 11 non-zero tensor elements all shown here, and only four of them are independent. So this result is very strong second harmonic generation. It's comparable to MOS2, which is already very strong. And that's exactly what you would expect considering it's just a Janus version of it. Now, the really important thing I want to emphasize is the out of plane response. So this is expected because we, because of that broken mirror symmetry, we have an out of plane dipole. But the um, response, especially in the ZX direction is very strong comparable to the in-plane direction, and that, that is especially um, applicable in advanced optical optoelectronic devices. Uh, this photocurrent is a nonlinear photocurrent that is a two-photon process, result of one photon being absorbed and the second photon contributing to the shift in the location of the electron. Since current is just the movement of electrons, then the shift is in fact, a photocurrent, so that we call this shift photocurrent, which is an effect of linearly polarized light and has applications in both solar cells and other advanced optoelectronic devices, which we'll talk more about shortly. Now, onto the actual calculated result. We see, again, what we would expect for independent non-zero tensor elements and um, 11 total non-zero elements. And again, um, MOS2 has a comparable result that is a strong shift photocurrent. And this, this material, this Janus MOSFE, has a big advantage over MOS2 in that MOS2 only has one direction, the y axis direction. And while um, this material has a very strong out of plane shift current response. And so this is very important for optoelectronic device applications and solar cells. For example, this is a potential architecture for a shift current photovoltaic based on our material Janus MOSOC. Because it exhibits such a strong out of plane shift current, then we, when we stack them, stack graphene um, sandwich MOSOC between two layers of graphene that can serve as the transport layers and possibly the electrodes, then that can create um, a very powerful potential solar cell. And some of the benefits of this type of nonlinear solar cell, so to speak, is that its efficiency can exceed the SQ limit that um, limits conventional PV materials, photovoltaics. Additionally, there is potential for hot carrier extraction since so much of the solar spectrum is above the band gap of solar, typical solar cell absorbers, and we need. To maximize our efficiency, we need to be able to extract those hot carriers. And also, you know, an obvious worry for using a two-dimensional material for photovoltaic is the level of absorption. However, the absorption of these types of materials, MX2 materials, which are transition metal dicalcogenides, they have a very large absorption coefficient, especially for their thickness. So you have approximately 10 nanometers of uh, MOS2 is kind of a, is basically equivalent to about 50 nanometers of silicon, if I remember correctly. And so for their thickness, it's very good. And when you combine that with different types of light trapping techniques, if you add reflector materials or um, with other heterostructure materials that can um, use interference to maximize the absorption, then we can actually approach 100% absorption with these materials. So absorption is, is less of a concern when considering those things. So overall, this potential architecture could work in a shift photocurrent photovoltaic. That's an exciting uh, opportunity on the rise here. So in conclusion, we performed calculations on a novel PV material that has nonlinear optical phenomena that does not exist in MOS2 or MOS2. Specifically, it has time plane, second harmonic generation, and shift current, and also has an injection current that doesn't even exist in MLS2, which for the sake of time we did not include in this presentation. But this also allows us to have applications of solar cells and other advanced optical electronic materials. 
I would like to acknowledge my research advisor, Xiaofeng Chan, as well as my mentor, Hua Wang, and the other members of Dr. Chan's research group, as well as funding from NSF and the resources made available from Texas A&M, the High Performance Research Computing. And thank you for your time, and you can always contact me with any questions you have. Thank you.